I like very few celebrity makeup brands. Well then that makes two of us. <laughs> Not because I'm a hater, but because I think doing this for 10 years, that if you're a celebrity and you're diving into the beauty space, you obviously have the capital to invest in making your brand amazing right from the start. The only missing piece is obviously the knowledge of the formulas and the products. So if you come out with like, meh, makeup, kind of outing yourself that it's not a financial issue, it's a knowledge issue. Red to fail! So obviously by the title of today's video, you know we are doing a full face of Rare Beauty by Selena Gomez. Rare Beauty is a celebrity makeup brand that I thoroughly enjoy. I have tried like one or two products for a long time now and I've loved everything I've gotten. I really wanted to do a full face of Rare Beauty so you know what is hot, what is not. I'm also going to be doing a daytime look on the eyes and showing you how to transition it into a nighttime look. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me. But I'm so excited, guys. Let's dive in and do a full face of Rare Beauty. All right, so as always, I went ahead and filled my brows and primed the lids with a little concealer. I don't have the Rare Beauty brow pencil. I can't bring myself to buy any brow pencil over $20 because I have 50 million drugstore brow pencils that are incredible. I use the Morphe Definer Brow Pencil in Latte, and this is like incredible, and it's like $6, so I'm not gonna do that. And then as far as concealer, no shade really worked for me, so I just couldn't find a concealer that matched me, so unfortunately, we're not gonna be reviewing the concealer, but normally I set my concealer with a little bit of powder, which we're not going to do that today because I'm using the Rare Beauty Liquid Eyeshadows. This is what the packaging looks like. I love that all of her round packaging is flat so it can sit on a table without rolling off. I think that's really smart and has really good consideration for the consumer that you don't want your stuff rolling all over. For the daytime and nighttime look as well, I thought what better inspiration to pull from than Selena Gomez herself. So for the daytime look, my inspiration, I'll throw the picture up right here. Selena looks gorgeous as always, literally stunning. I'm so obsessed with her. If you're not watching Only Murders in the Building, I don't know what you're doing. It's absolutely phenomenal and she should have got an Emmy nomination. But the first color we're going in with is Nearly Rose. This is what we're gonna use in the crease and outer corner. Let's do a little in the inner crease like that. And I'm gonna take a fluffy blending brush and start buffing this into the crease. I don't set my lids with any powder when I'm using liquid eyeshadow because I want this to go right over that wet concealer so it blends easier and it's not blending on top of powder. Okay, wow, that blended out on the eyes like an absolute dream. You have tons of playtime to blend these. They don't dry down too quick. The edges feather out awesome. Like some liquid eyeshadows are really hard to work with, but this is gorgeous. Now I'm gonna deepen things up a little bit with the shade Nearly Apricot. The first one we did in the crease all over the lid and now this one we're just gonna leave a little lower on the lid more to deepen things up. I'm curious how these are gonna blend on top of each other like how they layer. Now let's go ahead and press that onto the lid first. Circular motions in the crease to buff out the edges of that nearly apricot shade. Okay, that blended out gorgeous on top of the other one and super up close. There is no creasing, even on the insides. This really dries down to a gorgeous, not total powder finish, but definitely cream to powder, but no creasing, blended on top of each other, absolutely stunning. And we're gonna leave the eyes like this for the day look, because this really is all the shadow she has on. And now we're gonna go in with the Rare Beauty Eyeliner. I am super excited to try this. One of the reasons when I open this that I love this is it's actually a brush tip. It's not a felt tip, and I that's my favorite when it comes to eyeliner. We're not going to do a super big wing, and I can't believe I'm doing this on camera because eyeliner is petrifying, but we got to see how this is. And I have some thoughts about this. This isn't my favorite. It's not the best eyeliner I've ever used. It's not the worst eyeliner I've ever used. It's a little skippy and draggy, which I don't love, especially if you're doing a wing like this. The longer it takes you to do the wing, it is drying out as you're trying to put it on. And honestly, to get the super clean, connected top line that I have on the outsides, I kind of got fed up with this and I switched to my Eye Method eyeliners. Let alone the price, you're getting two eyeliners with two eyeliner stamps and two eyeliners on the other end which even though this is a little bit thicker, 
this is like a dream. It glides down like a marker. And in another con of the Rare Beauty is you can't use the tip like a marker. With the Eye Method liner, you can literally use the very, very tippy, tippy tip and look how much comes out. Compared to the Rare Beauty, when you go to use the very, very tip, you're just not getting as much coverage. So like when I try to fill in the bottoms here and tight line a little, it just doesn't really work for me. So this definitely isn't my favorite. But now we're gonna try the Rare Beauty Mascara. The brush is nice and fat, which I like because my lashes are so underwhelming. I need something to hike them up. Okay, let's do one eye to compare. I have been hearing rumblings like on TikTok and other social media that people love this mascara, so I'm super excited to see. Okay, we have one eye done. I let it dry down between and did a second coat. So one eye has it and one eye does not. What do you guys think? This is why I don't review mascaras because I have the most underwhelming lashes, but I will say I'm digging this. This mascara, I would say, gives you a lot of volume, curl, and lift. This does not separate. This is not a good separating mascara. My lashes look very full and it added a lot of almost like fibery fullness and they really like looking dead on. The fact that I can even see a little bit of my lashes above my eyeliner is kind of a big deal for me. This is pretty lit. I'm going to pop on some lashes and we will be ready to start the complexion. All right, lashes are on and the daytime eye look is done and now it is time to prime the skin. We are going in with the pore diffusing primer. This is the first Rare Beauty product I ever bought and I fell in love with this beyond belief because I really think this is one of the only primers that not only is pore diffusing but is also super hydrating and keeps the oil at bay in your t-zone from coming through the makeup throughout the day and it's really hard to find a primer that actually does all of those things because most like smoothing and pore diffusing primers either cannot be hydrating or they're not going to like be shine controlling and oil controlling but this truly does it all this lived in my bridal kit for like well over a year, still does. If you're somebody that's looking for something that's hydrating, is actually going to fill the pores and keep you from getting shiny in the T-zone, I can't recommend this primer enough. All right, now that we're primed, I did a little bit of color correcting on my shadow here with my LA Girl Pro Conceal in Peach as always, but we are going in with the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. So this is what the packaging looks like. I think the packaging is stunning on this bottle. This is an oil-based foundation, so you really want to give this a shake before you go in with this to really make sure nothing is separated when you go to put it on. No matter what you're pairing this with, primer-wise, you want to make sure you're not using a water-based primer or it could really just kind of not mix well and break up on the skin. But I think it's really interesting that this claims to be a medium coverage for normal to combination because I think this is actually stunning on dry skin. I have to admit, I cheated when I bought this a couple days ago and started using it immediately because I was excited. And I'm not kidding when I tell you here that much will literally do the entire half of my face. I don't know where this has been my entire life, but this foundation to me is so weightless. It really is marketed as a serum foundation with a serum-like feel, and I could not agree with that more because I just think this looks like a second skin. It is so beautiful blends out effortless. Look at this. Like, I'm using the Real Techniques brush. This is the Expert Face Brush. I also recommend don't use a beauty blender with this, especially because you would wet your beauty blender with water, and the water is not going to mix well with the oil. I think a brush or your fingers would be perfect for this foundation. I think this would not only be stunning for people with combination and normal skin types, but also mature and dry skin. Look how stunning this looks compared to the before. It's just such a beautiful foundation. I've even been using this every day for like my guy makeup when I just wanna throw something on that looks like I have nothing on. This has blown me away. Now for bronzing. We are going in with the Rare Beauty Bronzing Stick. I got mine in the shade Happy Soul. And I just kinda wanna go right in with it on the face to see how it blends. But we're just gonna do a little bit just like that because normally I would dip into the product I would either like swipe it like this or go in with a beauty sponge but as I said this is a oil based foundation so you don't want to use a wet beauty sponge but I want to know if this is going to blend well without dipping into the product and just swiping it right on the face okay that 
blended like a dream. I will say this color, I don't know if this is too, if it's pulling red for me. I like it so far. No, I don't think it's really pulling that red. I'm super impressed with how this is blending, putting it right on the skin. Normally when I put products directly on my skin and blend how I'm blending, they don't blend that well. So we'll do a little bit on the chin like this to add a little bit more of an oval face shape. This will kind of point the face and sculpt a little bit more. And I'm not gonna use this on my nose because it is a little bit too red and I don't want the red on my nose. So I'll just use a normal contour stick underneath the jaw. Again, I think this would be absolutely gorgeous for all skin types, mature, dry, oily. Wow, wow, wow. Selena. But I gotta keep an eye out for Selena. I don't have the concealer from Rare Beauty. This is actually the new Bobbi Brown concealer I wanted to try, the full coverage concealer. It's meh, I don't know, it's not bad, but I judge pricier concealers harsher because if I'm paying almost $30 for a concealer, I want it to like make me look 15 again, and um, it didn't, so pass. Anyway, we're talking about blush. So Rare Beauty blushes, I feel like the soft pinch liquid blushes from Rare Beauty were like one of the first things to go viral from her brand. We know this, we love this, I have it in the shade Happy, I think it's absolutely to die for. But I recently got this one. This is the Melting Blush, and this is in Nearly Rose. The packaging is so cute, if I could get it open. So that's what it looks like, and it matches this entire look flawlessly. So what we're gonna do with this bad boy, same thing. I would normally go in with my Beauty Blender, but I'm gonna go in with my stippling brush. I tap off on my hand, and let's go ahead and build this up. Oof. Wow, already pigmented and beautiful. Wow, that is the blush blend out on the skin. Didn't disturb the concealer, the foundation, the bronzing stick, anything around it. This is truly beautiful, but I feel like it's no surprise that at this point we know Rare Beauty does blushes, especially cream blushes and liquid blushes, stunning. So just like the soft pinch blush, this one is to die for as well. All right, everything is blended out. The blush is on, it's looking stunning. The complexion is truly looking beautiful. I just made sure I have no creasing under the eye because now we're gonna set everything. I'm going in with the Rare Beauty setting powder. This is in the shade light. We are putting a little bit in the top and I'm going in with a powder puff. Get a little bit on the puff and as always just work that into the puff using the back of my arm. And now I'm going to go ahead and set the under eyes here and I always can tell my pores are so big on the sides of my nose how a setting powder is going to perform. So I'm holding out hope. Pressing this on seeing if this blurs and sets everything. Okay, so that is this side set. It is definitely smoothing, like my skin looks gorgeous. It didn't change the tone of the concealer or anything around it. It's not the most blurring powder I've ever used, but it really set everything gorgeous. If you have large pores, this may not be your favorite powder because it's really not going to blur blur like maybe the Yuma Beauty Trip and Smooth powder does or the Huda Beauty, but this really is stunning. I think if you have dry skin or mature skin, this would look absolutely stunning. Now with what's left in the lid, I'm gonna take a powder brush and dip this in, get the brush nice and coated, tap off the excess. Woo, that was a lot of excess. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set the rest of my complexion. So I don't have any powder, bronzer, or blushes from Rare Beauty. I actually don't know if they make powder, bronzers, and blushes. I have to look into that. So I am just going to use something just to kind of beef it up a little bit, and we will be right back. All right, I finished up the complexion. I wanna tell you what I used. So I used the Sigma Bronzer in Medium, and and the Koki Gradient Blush in my favorite. This is Heartthrob, and I really wanted to make sure that I kept both of these very true to the cream colors, so we still get the overall like motif of Rare Beauty, what Rare Beauty is serving, but I just punched everything up a little bit with that. And now to finish up the under eye, I'm gonna go in with the Darker Liquid Shadow in Nearly Apricot, and I'm very curious to see how this works on the lower lash line. So I'm just going to paint this along the outside half of the lower lash line, just like that. And with a flat pinched brush, we are going to buff this and blend this out under 
the lash line to finish up the eyes. All right, the liquid shadow blended out like a dream under the eye, just as good as it did on top. I have no complaints there. I'm looking at the inspiration picture and it seems like Selena had a nude liner on her waterline, so I added one. This is from Essence. This is the Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil in Silky Nude. This is such a good nude pencil if you're looking for it. But now it is time to do lips. So we are using the Rare Beauty Lip Liner, Kind Words Matte Lip Liner to be exact, and this is in the shade Talented. I'm super excited to try this. I'm a lip liner addict and I'm really hoping this is creamy and better than my <clears throat> um, REM Beauty experience. That I said what I said! All right, that is the lip liner on. Went on beautiful, creamy, gorgeous, clean line, stunning, amazing, obsessed with the color. Now for lip gloss to finish up the daytime look, I'm going in with her lip gloss in Nearly Rose. Again, it has that awesome flat bottom so it doesn't roll off the desk. All right, that is the gloss on. This is stunning. Such a beautiful color. I love this with this talented lip liner. Like it really just looks like a very effortless daytime lip. So yeah guys, this is the finished daytime look. Now to punch up this look for nighttime, we are using the Rare Beauty True To Myself Eyeshadow Palette. I love the layout of this. I love how unique the half moons, it's like awesome. But we're gonna go in with the brown shade first on a very detailed brush. And we're gonna take this and just add a little bit of darkness and depth to the outer corners of the eye. Okay, so see what a difference that made on the outer corners, adding a little bit of that brown, just enhancing it, making a little bit more smoky. Now we're going to punch up the inner parts of the eyelid with the shade Loyal, which is this like gorgeous pinky golden reflect. And I'm taking it on a very pinched brush and I am going to spray it with a little bit of the Rare Beauty setting spray because I can tell it's a little bit drier of a formula so I don't want to have too much fallout especially because our complexion is done and now we're going to take this and we're going to start right on the inner corner all right so we added that pink on the inside this color is so cool the more i used it like literally in some lights when it's dead on it's like this dark pink that you're seeing now but then when you turn it it literally looks copper it's the coolest duo chrome but as you can see see how we really beefed up the eyes and just really made this more of a nighttime look i also went ahead and just punched up my blush a little bit just to give a little bit more strength up here because we are now going to, well, before we wipe off the lip, I'm gonna go back in with that brown and we're going to smoke this out on the lower lash line, mainly on the outside, 50%. We don't wanna bring this in too far, just like that, just to anchor the outside a little bit more. See how that gives a little bit more of a smoky look to this side opposed to the other one. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna take the center gold shade here in Accepting and dip into this. I am definitely gonna spray the brush because this is more of a chunky kind of glitter. And I'm gonna use this to highlight the inner corner, pressing it. And the reason I'm tipping my head like this is so that if there's any fallout, it doesn't go on the under eye. Just like that, a little pop on the inside corner and now we're just wiping off the daytime lip and we're gonna kind of do something that's a little bit more nude to balance out the stronger eye okay i took off the first lip and i put the same lip liner right back on i also changed the liner in the waterline to black because i really just wanted to feel the nighttime vibe and i think it gives you a great idea of like how you can amp something up so easily changing it from day to night but now we're gonna go in with the rare beauty lipstick in the shade talented which matches the lip liner we're using Using. Okay, wow, that is a really beautiful formula. It feels super nice on the lips, not drying at all. It looks really pretty up close, like really nice and hydrated. I think I do want to put a little bit of a gloss in the center. I don't have one from Rare Beauty that would really go with it, so I'm going to use this new one I got from Juvia's Place in Bronze Sugar. That is so beautiful. All right, and last but not least, we are going to set everything with the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist 4-in-1 Mist. We're going to shake this this well and go ahead and set everything that 
is a really nice mister and I'm just gonna press everything in with a beauty sponge. This beauty sponge is dry because like I said, I really don't wanna add any water, but this just really marries that setting spray into the skin and lays down all the baby hairs, melts the powder in. All right guys, that is it. And this is the finished look. We did two looks, daytime to nighttime, everything, most everything, rare beauty. I am really, really floored. I tried like the primer before this. I've been playing with the foundation since I bought it, but that was really all I tried. To be honest with you, everything that I have tried from her, I'm really, really impressed. I, I would go through everything and like say what was hits for me, but to be honest, other than the eyeliner, which I'm not a huge fan of, everything else I tried, I am so impressed with. I love the way the complexion looks, the skin looks gorgeous, the eyes look gorgeous. I just think it's a really well done brand. The quality is there. It's very thoughtful. The packaging is thoughtful. It has the consumer in mind. The color story for things like eyeshadow and blushes really take into consideration the average consumer who's just using this for every day, but then you can make things more playful and fun. So overall, I just think it is super great brand. Kudos to Selena Gomez. I hope you guys had fun watching this video. Comment down below any other videos you would like to see from me. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the little notification bell next to the subscription button and you'll be notified every single time I post. I upload every day. You don't want to miss it. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy, and I will see you on the next video.